whether frozen, dried, locally grown or imported, we can now buy berries all year round. But could eating them out of season have implications for our health? And are they as good for us as we might think anyway? I'll investigate these questions and more. But first, which are our favourite? Well, according to Household Spend, strawberries are by far our most popular berry. But botanists might argue they're not berries at all. When is a berry not actually a berry? I want to know if you can tell me which of the fruit on this tray here are berries. This one? Well, definitely the raspberries. That's a bit of a giveaway. But actually, nobody we asked picked out all the berries correctly. You're going to be surprised here because it's the grapes, the kiwi fruit, the cucumber, and the banana are the ones that are berries. Oh. Are you surprised? Yes. Raspberries, not berries. Oh. I know. Very, very, very surprised. <laughs> Blackberries and the raspberries, not true berries at all. Oh, OK. What are they then? Well, the term they've been given is aggregate fruit. Well, you learn something every day, don't you? You do indeed. According to the strict botanical definition, a berry is a fleshy fruit of a single ovary with multiple internal seeds. And that excludes many of our favourites, like the strawberry. But tonight, we'll ignore botany and focus on fruit we know and love as berries. One which has enjoyed a recent surge of popularity is the blueberry. Household spend has risen from less than a million to more than $10 million in just the last six years. So why so popular? Well, blueberries are cheaper, they are more widely available than ever before, and they've become known as a superfruit. So what separates the standard from the super? No question that berry fruits are superfruits. They've got a lot of different types of nutrients. I think about vitamin C, I think about folate, and I think about dietary fibre. Oranges are what many of us reach for when we have a cold. But wait for wait, strawberries and kiwi fruit both contain more vitamin C, while black currants contain four times as much. However, this isn't why some berries are more super than others. Superfruit's been a term that's been used particularly by marketers and it's used for a range of reasons but probably most commonly it's used to refer to fruits that are high in antioxidants. The ORAC scale measures food antioxidant levels. So which is the superest berry? Well of the better known berries, cranberries come in with the highest score, blackcurrants second, followed by blackberries, raspberries and blueberries with the still relatively super strawberry in last place. All these berries outscore some of our other favourite fruit. Anthocyanins are part of a group of antioxidants known as phenolics, which give red, blue and purple berries their colour. International studies have shown a diet rich in them may improve memory. superpower to the test locally, I've come to visit the Cumu Vintage Brass Band. While these chaps make sweet-sounding music together, sometimes their memories hit a bum note. Not very good at remembering uh, wedding anniversaries, wife's birthdays, or anything like that. I'll go to a cupboard to get something and then stand thinking, what on earth did I come to get? So will a six-week injection of anthocyanin-packed blueberries prove a cure for forgetfulness? Each band member will complete two tests. The time starts now. The first to see how many objects they can remember after viewing a flashcard for 20 seconds. Strawberry, tree, um, skyrocket. Go. The second to see how accurately they can memorise a musical score in 20 seconds and then play it back to our testers. <laughs> Well, on average, band members recall six of the flashcard objects. While in the musical test, they played an average of six of the 15 notes correctly from memory. We're giving each band member two cups of blueberries to eat a day for six weeks, and then we'll return to see if their scores improve. 
when it comes to berry advertising, superfruit and antioxidants are certainly buzzwords. In fact, research suggests we're 55 to 60 percent more likely to buy or stay with a product which makes an antioxidant health claim. But how are antioxidants good for me? The marketing fails to explain. Perhaps advertising guru Rick Starr will be able to tell me why. The manufacturers believe that the antioxidant makes a good selling point. It's, it's light on detail for a reason. We don't know a great deal about how these things operate in the body. They are probably good for us, but the clinical results are a little bit equivocal. Hmm, so are the claimed health benefits of antioxidants actually more marketing myths than science? In the 1990s, we were looking for mechanisms of action to explain why phenolic compounds help prevent disease. In the laboratory, we demonstrated that these compounds acted as antioxidants and could scavenge free radicals. A little like the process of rusting, free radicals are rogue molecules that cause oxidative damage to the body's cells, which can trigger a range of diseases. Free radicals can cause things like cancer and heart disease. Some of the functions in the brain are also affected by exposure to free radicals. We can reduce free radical damage by avoiding cigarettes, fatty food and pollution. But sunlight, physical activity and, well, just breathing also generate free radicals. Well, that one's kind of hard to get around. So can I reduce free radical damage by packing my diet with antioxidant-rich food? Unfortunately, new research suggests the compounds in berries and other foods may only act as antioxidants in the test tube. What we're not sure is how they actually work in our body. As we eat food, it's digested, but we're not sure whether the compounds reach our cells in high enough concentrations to act as antioxidants there. In fact, in February last year, the European Food Safety Authority said that claims about antioxidant effects had insufficient scientific evidence and should be removed from advertising and packaging. No word yet on whether this will become mandatory. So can we expect to see changes here? Well, possibly. Regulations surrounding health claims on food are under review and a new standard proposes... A high level of evidence will be required to support any health claims that are made. Coming up, I'll find out whether berries are still super despite the controversy over antioxidants. And with some varieties coated in as many as 14 pesticides, is your bowl of berries actually a toxic cocktail? I've learned that while many berries are a good source of basic nutrients, some antioxidant claims are on shaky scientific ground. So should we still be calling berries super fruit? Berries are fantastic for us. Just because the phenolic compounds may not act as antioxidants as we first thought, they act by a whole range of different other mechanisms. So berries are still super after all. And that's because even though the chemicals may not work as antioxidants in the body, there's still compelling evidence they have other health benefits. Research shows compounds in pomegranates are good for your heart, black currants can help asthma, and cranberries benefit the urinary tract. And as we've heard, anthocyanins and blueberries may improve memory. Which reminds me, how are our brass band getting on with putting this to the test? Three weeks into our six-week memory experiment, they've found more creative ways to pack them into their diet. They simply don't use enough blueberries. We'd have to have about a thousand muffins. But not everyone's a fan. I don't think I'll ever eat blueberries again. I can't wait for the experiment to finish. And there's still three weeks to go. We'll revisit the rest of the band later in the show to see if blueberries have tuned up their memories. I've already learned that not all berries are created equal. Some are more super than others. But can their superpowers be enhanced? Ron Beetson at Plant and Food in Motueka has promised to enlighten me. These are some strange looking berries. They're sort of like raspberries, but they're so much darker. Well, these are black raspberries, Carolyn. They're a different species, related very closely to the red raspberry. Their main claim to fame is the fact that they've got three to four times the anthocyanin content that uh, red raspberries have. So that must give them certain health benefits then? Yes, it certainly does. Let's give it a try. Mm. Not unpleasant, but it's quite tart, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Mm. Yeah, that's the problem with black raspberries, is that they haven't got such good flavour as the red raspberries. So, great for you, but not great tasting. To solve the problem, Plant and Food have bred a new hybrid variety. 
Why don't you try one of these uh, hybrids, you know, Carolyn? Mm, instantly much sweeter. Very nice. The cross we've made is really the perfect blend of high health properties and also the good flavours. But while new varieties are bred to be even tastier and better for us nutritionally, the modern berry may have a dark side. Pesticide exposure has been linked to hormonal disruption, neurological problems and cancer. In 2010, 94% of fruit and vegetables targeted by MAF's food surveillance program tested positive for pesticide residues. And in the latest Total Diet study, the berry fruit samples didn't fare so well in testing. The strawberry samples contained a total of 14 pesticides. The grapes, which you may remember meet the botanical definition of a berry, had 12 pesticides. The kiwi fruit had three and the raisins eight. So how much of these toxic chemicals are we serving up with our berries? Well, of the tested berry fruit, only two grape samples contained pesticides which exceeded acceptable levels set by MAF, known as maximum residue limits. Is this at least good news for berry lovers? Well, not necessarily. There's concern over the so-called toxic cocktail effect. What happens when uh, a pesticide is registered? They look at the effect of a single chemical at a time. Is it toxic? Is it not? How much can you tolerate? What they never look at is the combination of 13 chemicals together in your bowl of strawberries. Animal experiments show quite clearly that if you mix pesticides, the effects are very different indeed and sometimes more toxic than the pesticide on its own. So why could it be that we don't know more about the toxic cocktail effect? Farmers are using cocktails to make sure they keep below the trading levels. The companies that produce the pesticides are also quite keen that the farmers use them because that's their business. So studying the cocktail effect is something that's not... It's rather frowned upon by the industry, I think and it's difficult to get funding to study it. Horticulture New Zealand told us the use of multiple pesticides should be viewed as a toolbox to control multiple pests and diseases, not a cocktail. While MAF says international experts agree the cocktail effect is rare, they told us... Testing to date has shown that consuming a mix of chemicals at the levels found in foods is of no more concern than consuming each chemical individually. So it seems unlikely these New Zealand pesticide regulations are going to change anytime soon. Whether or not the cocktail effect is a danger, one pesticide found on raisins, sultanas and kiwifruit samples in the last Total Diet study has been linked to serious health problems. Chlorpyrifos is an organophosphate pesticide which may disrupt our hormones and cause developmental problems in kids. Do I, as a toxicologist, think that there might be a link between exposure to organophosphorus pesticides, chlorpyrifos being an example, and brain development? I think there probably is. In fact, a 2010 US study associated childhood exposure to organophosphate pesticides with an increased risk of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD. There's also evidence that consuming hormone-disrupting pesticides while pregnant can cause other long-term damage. The effect can occur not only when they're children, they can be manifested as, as childhood diseases uh, and, and conditions like obesity, for instance, but they can also cause impacts later on in life, for example, development of cancer. What's more, some media reports have linked the death of Kiwi tourist Sarah Carter with high-level exposure to chlorpyrifos used to kill bed bugs in her Thailand hotel. Scary stuff. We asked the Environmental Risk Management Authority if there are any plans to look at this chemical safety. They told us... Chlorpyrifos is on Irma New Zealand's list of substances which are being considered for review because of their adverse effects on human health and the environment. So what about with pesticides generally? Are some berries more likely to be contaminated by pesticides than others? Winter strawberries are far more contaminated than summer strawberries and that's because our winter strawberries are imported. In fact, the latest Total Diet study found a total of six pesticides on strawberries bought in January and February, compared with 13 found on imported strawberries bought in July and August. So with strawberries at least, eating them fresh in season may help reduce your exposure to pesticides. But is it worth giving them a rinse too? I think the answer is yes, but probably not as well as you might think. Most pesticides are not very water soluble, and so washing with water isn't a good way to get them off. 
Fact or fiction? Ever worried the white film on blueberries and some grapes might be a harmful pesticide residue? Fear not, it's actually a naturally occurring waxy coating called cutin. Unfortunately, pesticides are invisible. After the break, I'll investigate whether dried, frozen or fresh berries are best for us nutritionally. And our human experiment has unexpected results. But there's no doubt, there's something in it. I found out that as good for us as berries are nutritionally, most conventional growers use pesticides, which some experts say are bad for our health. But there is one sure way to avoid these chemicals completely. Certified organic berries are grown free of synthetic pesticides. But how do they go on taste? We paid a visit to Oratea Primary School to find out which the kids preferred when it came to kiwi fruit, strawberries and blueberries. The berries on the blue plate are conventionally grown, while the ones on the green plate are organically grown. Can our kids taste the difference? The blue, it's got more texture in it and it's really nice. I like green because it's sweet. But overall, the kids preferred the organic kiwi fruit. Yay! The organic strawberries also came out on top. Yeah! As for the blueberries, the kids found both types equally tasty. Yeah! So, food for thought. Not only are organic berries grown using no synthetic pesticides, but according to the kids, they taste better too. Dried berries like raisins are available year round and have a much longer shelf life than fresh berries. Are they a better choice? Well, I was surprised to learn many dried berries contain additives. A sulphur dioxide is sometimes added to dry fruit to stop them going brown. In the case of raisins, we expect raisins to be brown. Therefore, no sulphur dioxide required. But over here, if you didn't add it, would you buy brown strawberries? But sulphur dioxide can have nasty side effects for those intolerant to it. These include stomach upsets, hives, and in severe cases, anaphylactic shock. If you want to avoid sulphates like sulphur dioxide, look out for food numbers starting with a double two. So, what else do I need to know? It's over to our diet divas. They are market in a way that people perceive them as being a healthy choice but I think it's important we understand that they are a high sugar choice. The sugar in berries is concentrated when they're dried and some manufacturers also add sugar during processing. Look out for it in the ingredients. When adding up all sugars, we found several varieties which contain more total sugar than fruit gums and one brand of sultanas contain more than jelly beans. Dried berries have lost all their water-soluble vitamins, so your B vitamins and C vitamins aren't there. But like fresh fruit, dried berries still contain the fibre and beneficial phenolic compounds. Just be careful not to eat too many. A serving size of berries is basically a very small portion in your hand. You've got to imagine it's the same serving size as if it was a whole fruit, but it's actually just been contracted down because the water's gone. And aside from concentrated sugar, there could be another good reason to limit your portion size. Pesticides. Dehydration concentrates the levels of pesticides in berries, so a handful of raisins could contain more pesticides than a handful of grapes from the same harvest. We tested a variety of dried berries for pesticides. Of the four samples we tested, three were pesticide free, but the Chinese goji berries contained five residues, although these were within MAF's acceptable levels. Frozen berries are another option to fresh, but do they have similar nutritional drawbacks to dried berries? Frozen berries are a better choice than dried berries. Often they're picked and processed on the same day, so those nutrients are retained. The best way to store fresh berries is in the fridge, but because they start to lose nutrients as soon as they've been picked, they may already be past their best. So if the berries are snap frozen or canned on the day of picking, could they actually be better for you than supermarket bought fresh berries? Well, lab testing of canned fresh and frozen blueberries revealed the canned berries were best for folate and vitamin C, while the frozen berries contained the most fibre. 
gosh, it nearly slipped my mind. It's time to catch up with our brass band to see if blueberries have improved their powers of memory. For the past six weeks, they've been eating two cups of blueberries a day. So are they still as forgetful? Last night, I couldn't find my wallet anywhere. I did eventually find it. I put it in the oven. And I have no idea why. <laughs> Not a universal vote of confidence then, but what will the results of our experiment reveal? OK, 20 seconds, starting now. Each band member was shown a second flashcard and musical memory test of comparable difficulty with the first. Combo, piece of cake. On average, band members recalled six flashcard objects exactly the same as previously. There was a slight improvement in the musical test results, the average number of notes recalled correctly rising from six out of 15 to nine. But our experiment didn't really end on a high note. There were, however, some unintended benefits. I can see normally about that distance. But now, my vision for about um, 10, 15 metres. Well, David's right. Scientific <laughs> research has shown the anthocyanins in blueberries can reduce eye strain and improve night vision. So what have I learned about berries? While the science on antioxidants might be shaky, the chemical compounds in berries still provide a whole range of other health benefits. Rinsing fresh berries will help lower my exposure to pesticides to an extent, but I'll keep in mind that some may have lower levels in season. Also, it's good to know frozen berries are packed full of nutrients. And while they may be yummy and convenient, I'll be limiting the amount of dried berries I have. I don't want them raising my weight. <laughs> <laughs>